Okay, our next presentation is from the University of Tokyo in Japan by uh, L. Fan, K. Dakota, and Professor Fujimoto, and it's entitled Characterization of Mass Transfer in Supercritical Phase Fischer Trope Synthesis Reaction. And uh, Dr. Fan will be presenting the presentation.
three kinds of cases we are using our experiment. It is it were um crystal theory or the machine alumina as well as cobalt nonsense silicon. <coughs> the total pressure is forty five bar and uh, the partial pressure of synthetic gas is ten bar and uh, on the other hand the balance material partial pressure is thirty five bar. So in the case of supercritical phase we use normal exam as the uh, as the reaction medium. And in the case of gas phase, the nitrogen is used. And on, in the case of liquid phase, we are quicker, uh, we are utilized, uh, utilized no more hexagon, and uh, the nitrogen was used. In this figure, we compare the hydrocarbon product distribution in three reaction phases respectively, where the genuine alumina catalyst was used. It is noted that if the extraction by the supercritical fluid was conducted one hour after the extraction finished to extract the heavy hydrocarbons located in the catalyst bed. As we say, in the case of gas phase, the efferent product is characterized by, the, by its low carbon number, while the extracted product are concentrated are concentrated on the hybrid hydrocarbon. But in the case of super fuel phase and uh, the liquid phase, the, the, the extracted products are very flat. And they depend and the independent super critical extraction is very flat and also the, um, the amount of it is very small than the Expected ones. So we, we, we can conclude here that uh, in situ extraction occurs when the. Also, in the case of liquid phase, we can find that the effluent hydrocarbon is concentrated on the light hydrocarbon. Also, the amount of extract, extracted products was very little. In this level, it is compared to the phase effect from the ruthenium catalyst. We can see CO conversion in the supercritical phase reaction is close to that in the gas phase reaction, where the CO conversion in the liquid phase was very low. Also, we can find the cause of the effective destruction capacity of the supercritical fluid. The residue ratio is very low. <coughs> For the super phase. Of course, on that hand, on, of course, the rest of the region in the liquid phase is also very low. On that hand, the gas phase, in the, in the case of gas phase reaction, that amount of having a hybrid hydrocarbons stayed inside the catalyst effect after the reaction. Also, we can see the chain growth probability here. Uh, in the case of gas phase reaction and the super critical phase reaction, carbon chain growth probability was very high. Both of, both of, it, both of them are higher than that in the liquid phase reaction. It means it, it seems that the CO by hydrogen ratio inside the catalyst pellets are, 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 are at the same level. It's, to be, it, it's a similar value in the case of gas phase reaction or the super critical phase reaction. In this table, in this figure, it is shown the phase effect from active from apparent activation energy for three reaction phase respectively. We can find the catalytic activity of the super liquid phase reaction is close to that of the gas phase reaction. Also, the apparent activation energy of them is the same. But in the case of liquid phase reaction, phase reaction Current activation energy of it is very low. It's only 21 kilocalorie more. So this should be attributed to the low diffusion rate of the synthesis gas in the case of liquid phase reaction. Because the intrinsic activation energy of the diffusion process of synthesis gas inside the catalyst was very low, so it limited the total 
overall activation energy. In order to explain the experimental performance of the synthetic gas, we simulated the equation behavior of it. These two equations were utilized to pursue the behavior change of the synthetic gas inside the catalytic batteries. Here, this function is the, is the hydrogen distribution profile distribution functions inside the catalytic batteries. And this is for this function is for the CO concentration change inside the catalyst. Also, we use this expression to calculate the effective rate spectrum. In this direction, we calculate the effective rate spectrum where the reflection temperature is different. In the case of test phase, superficial phase, and the phase, separate phase. So from we can find the effective, effective rate spectrum of the super phase reduction is close to that in the <coughs> gas phase reduction. Also, on that hand, in the case of liquid phase, we can find the effective rate spectrum of it is very low. Also, the experimental data is in good accordance with the theoretic ones. In this figure, it is shown the synthetic gas concentration profiles inside the catalytic spectrum for each reaction phase. In the case of simple chemical phase reaction, we can find the concentration profiles of all the, concentration, the, synthetic, the synthetic gas concentration profiles are also formed inside the gas, in the case of gas phase reaction inside the catalytic batteries. But in the case of peak phase reaction, Significant concentration change occurred inside the catalyst batteries. So the, the catalyst effectiveness factor in the super crystal phase is 0 0.56, 0 0.56 and it is 0.74 for the gas phase reaction. But in the case of liquid phase, it is only 0 0.18. we can find both, both the absorption and the diffusion of the 
form our OZ is very quickly, so the possibility of it to receive secondary hybridization is very low. So the question of the OZ percentage of it is very high. This is a simple scan for the secondary reaction of the primary origin. Formed alpha origin can dissolve and reabsorb. Of course, it is involved into the surface chain growth. Also, it can be dissolved from the catalytic surface in the form of alpha alpha origin, and then it can be hydrogenated from paraffin and then go out with something else. So this is a simulation model for our origin diffusion reaction mechanisms. As an example, I want to use this model to simulate the origin percentage change just introduced before ago. From this differential equation, we can determine origin. No, from from this diffusion, we can determine the total hydrocarbon concentration change. But with this diffusion differential equation, the origin concentration profiles, distribution profiles, can be determined. So this two, the, the ratio of these two values represents the origin percentage. Of course, we can find the synthetic gas concentration is decreased from outer surface into the center. And this table shows some simulation results of our work. As an example, the fraction of C8 and C15 is used to express here. Of course, the other hydrocarbons is available. But as we can see, working, simulate working percentage is here for three phase perspective. And also, this is an experiment one, experiment working percentage. This state is picked from this figure. Experimental, uh, the simulated value is in full agreement in full agreement with the experimental values. In this figure, it is shown. In this figure, it is shown the influence of the catalyst particle size on the origin content in the products. Direction phase is the superficial phase direction and turning alumina or positive lines. It is interesting to say that the change of origin, sorry, the change of catalyst particle size is not so upwards. The effect of it is not so upwards onto the origin content. So it is able to see that the diffusion rate, the diffusion rate of upper part of origin inside the catalyst phase is very quick, it's very quickly, and maybe the absorption of the upper origin from the catalyst surface to the back to the back to the back phase. It's a really becoming so. Let me <coughs> let me conclude with our present presentation. First, super critical fluid extracted the product during the reaction. Materials fuse more slowly in the super critical fluid than in the gas phase, but much faster than that in the liquid phase. Second, extraction of the product from the catalyst was the most effective in the supercritical phase. This was attributed to the well balance of desorption from the catalyst surface and diffusion inside the catalyst walls. At last, not only the heat transfer, but also mass transfer, so quick that secondary reactions of primary upper origin were surprised. At last, I want to use this chance to express our first line.
thanks to the engineering foundation of the Brigham School of the University of Brooklyn. Thank you very much. Experiment it lasted for about eight hours, but the used catalyst can be used, the used catalyst catalyst can be used again in the next experiment. I mean, the, because of the effective extraction of wax from the used catalyst, I say the extraction experiment was con conducted for, all, for one hour after the reaction finished, and of course the this catalyst. It's used, uh, it's used again in the second experiment. Okay, let me, let me ask you then uh, what you refer to gas phase uh, synthesis and supercritical and so on. Uh, on this catalyst, you make already a wax, so really you have in the pores of the catalyst, you have uh, liquid products, and your diffusivities are, are more like a diffusivities in the liquid phase rather than gas phase diffusivities. And I'm not sure in your simulations there, when you do effectiveness factor calculations, you have to use diffusivity. 
And uh, from the numbers I see there, it seems to me you are using um, gas phase diffusivities for what you call gas phase uh, fission traps. And uh, what kind of diffusivities did you use for supercritical phase? Uh, how did you estimate those? By numerical, it seems to me you use similar numbers as for the so-called gas phase synthesis. Can you elaborate on that uh, a little bit more? What, what, what the numbers did you use and how did you estimate those diffusivities in both of these cases? In the, in the case of supercritical phase reaction, the method to calculate the diffusion coefficient is not fixed. It's here a program on the geology. In this case, we use it's called wave chunk, wave chunk method. So it's, um, it is, I think it, it can be found in most of the dictionaries and can go in the engineering books. And books. We use the wave chunk method. To the super phase? Yes. Because uh, according to some recent research conducted by Professor Kevinetti, he said the wave chunk method is the most precise method to calculate coefficient, diffusion coefficient in the case of supercritical phase reaction. Well, it's not a good method for that precise point. Now, uh, what did you use for gas phase? Common, it is used in by common method. Okay, never mind, and we have. So, are, are you assuming that there is no link between the four stands, so you're using gas phase diffusivities? Yes. I'm curious. Uh, if uh, you are getting enhanced mass transfer, uh, but at the same time diluting your mix, that uh, you would get uh, an, uh, an increase in rate, but maybe an offsetting decrease in rate. And so what are the trade-offs in, in using the supercritical fluid? expect an increase in the rate of reaction with increased mass transfer in the pores. So that's an advantage. But uh, also you are using a diluent uh, in the form of, of uh, hexane in this case, right? And it seems to me that by diluting the, the reactant stream, then you are lowering the effective rate of reaction. And so uh, I wondered uh, if, if that, that uh, lowering offsets the uh, the advantage of having increased mass transfer. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to <laughs> <laughs> erase a lot of our usual questions, obviously. 